Hello and welcome to Eat Your Backyard, my YouTube channel, where I take you through all the things that I'm doing in my little food fruit forest, and spring has sprung here in Florida, so I thought I would give a tour and also reconnect with everybody. I haven't been live streaming here lately, but I plan to start again. I was reticent to continue the live streaming on this phone because the quality is so poor of the image. But I'm going to keep on going because I've had a lot of requests to continue. By the way, if you would like to see the more high quality video of the backyard, including flyovers, fly ins, go ahead and check out the other videos on the channel. Quick ad to get started please support the channel by just clicking on the Amazon links in the description. And even if you're going to get a uh, sugarcane peeler. <laughs> <laughs> or a pair of those gauntlet style leather gloves that I wear because if I don't I just seem to be injured every single time or even like you know clippers I just bought new clippers stoke yeah I'm not trying to sell you clippers I'm just saying nothing like new clippers really sharp ones <laughs> it's about like 30 bucks on the clippers which I haven't regretted yet Yeah, so use those Amazon links and that helps to buy more bunnies. All right, let's get started. It's really all about buying the bunnies. This moment right here is, I would say why you do what I advocate doing, which is to create a food forest in your backyard, to create a system that serves you and your family and your friends. It's because it is just a beautiful little slice of paradise right at your fingertips. Especially on a bright blue summer day like this in Central Florida, Eastern Central Florida. I am about even with Orlando. Let me make sure the live chat is on. Okay. Good. I had it on top chat. Summer day. Oh, well, it feels like a summer day. It's a summer day to me. Summer started for me, honestly, yesterday. Or at least, at least spring because it's just gotten so warm and where I am, yeah, in Miami, summer started, what, two weeks ago? <laughs> uh, beautiful Miami. All right, we're just gonna go there. I appreciate you bringing that up, Benjamin. I need a tamarind tree in my life. That's it, simple claim. And in Miami, I hear they grow like weeds, that the tamarind trees flow like water. Is this true? I'm kind of at the point where I'm thinking I'm going to have to drive to Miami to get a tamarind tree. Here, they're like the rarest thing. It's so funny. Everybody I know from South Florida goes, yeah. That and, and also they have the same reaction to... to uh, Suriname cherries <laughs> and they always say oh this cherries have worms in them I've never found worms in them but that's because I don't look it's an easy way to not find worms in any of your fruit just simply don't don't uh, look you don't want to know you don't want to know take an eyelash and, uh, for, or some hair from your eyebrow and look at it under a microscope and see the colonies of creatures living on you right now no, or don't. Yeah, why would you do that? Okay, so here is a tour of my little food forest. And I plan on going around the whole yard here and showing you what's going on. Now, I've added a lot of things this year. I took almost a little break from what I was doing on YouTube to just build up the capability and get my system started. And I actually took a fair amount of time. So, hey, Garden Earth Guy. How you doing? Thanks for jumping on. I appreciate it. Yeah, Ben. Sorry, I gotta 
tap on the screen to look at the chat sometimes. Homestead has tons of nurseries with low prices. Oh, that's great to know. That's a good excuse to go down to Homestead because if you're in Homestead, you're almost at the Keys. <laughs> as far, in my way of looking at it because I'm so far from the Keys here. And it's such a special, cool place. Talk about coconut trees. By the way, on another tangent here, just to get started, I have located dwarf Malay coconuts, which are another thing that I might wait on now if I'm going to take a trip down to Homestead. <laughs> That wouldn't be a bad idea. Wow. Okay, so here's the tour. The Tommy Atkins mango tree is a great resilient type of mango that produces almost mangoes impervious to salt issues, to uh, pests. That's been my experience. Yet the mango quality is, you know, I would call it average. Still great as a mango perfect looking mangoes. They use them commercially a lot, but I don't know if you've ever gotten a mango at the grocery store and you're kind of like, ah, this is mango, this is C plus mango. Yeah, that's Tommy Atkins. It's A plus in looks. You ever, <laughs> yeah, we know that scenario well. Great to look at, but once you get to know the personality <laughs> of the mango, we're just talking about mangoes. Yeah, chalky tasting. Yeah, they're, you know, I don't know. I don't want to complain about mangoes. But I certainly am tempted to. This is the star fruit. Now, the star fruit is recovering from the colder temps that we get here in central Florida. It gets down right to the lower limit of what a star fruit tree is going to tolerate where I am here. And you can see these trees all kind of look leggy, but that's because winter and it affects these three trees a fair amount but this is it's growing back that's the thing with the star fruit tree as long as it survives through it'll grow back tons of shoots very healthy uh if this thing fruited like it's never fruited before last year and uh i think this year is going to set another record too because of the bunnies and i'm going to go show you those here in a minute i've added the animal component to my yard finally so this is a mulberry tree, uh, kind of old. You can see it's got, well, maybe you can't see, but it's got moss kind of growing on it. So it's at the end of its life cycle, I'm thinking. As I'm, They've had this for a long time. I have videos of this thing on the channel that are 10 years old. Uh, it, it has produced many offspring. And it was an offspring of the original that I bought. But it is just loaded with fruit. And this is why you want a mulberry tree in your yard. Oh, easy to grow the star fruit down in Miami, yeah. So much fruit. What do you do with all the fruit is always my question. I, now I have a compost bin, so. Yeah, but tons of fruit. You know, these are all gonna fruit. And by the way, I'm gonna feed the buns. Everything, I'm, a lot of what I'm showing you, I can feed the, the bunnies now. I have compost bunnies, pet bunnies, beautiful little lion head bunnies. I'll show you those towards the end of the video. Yeah, so, the, and they love the mulberries. They like the leaves. Mostly I'll get the fresh green shoots and been feeding them those. Um, here's a Meyer lemon. This thing is gnarly, uh, disease looking leaves. Does what I think most citrus trees end up doing in my yard, which is to, because I don't hit them with the pesticides, so they suffer. They've got leaf boring stuff. That being said, it produces a bumper crop of lemons every year, so we're just fine with it being exactly the way it is. I actually planted it here next to the house as a it was dying there from the from the sprinkler system i have which is very salty the irrigation here and i just threw it next to the house and it actually lived it fell over on its side and grew up and now it's been producing lemonade for us for years here's the what you got growing on series grow table where i started it but now i have gone way way overboard as is my tendency to do uh still have many things growing here but this is the grow table series. I'll try, I'll come back and link a video right here to the playlist for the What You Got Going On series. But a lot of this stuff was grown in that. But I've expanded now to new things. Growing multiples of things because I'm now putting this into use to populate my backyard with all kinds of different um, things. So this is the this row of pots here is actually all green sugar cane. I have some red sugar cane, a couple of crotons I'm growing that I grew from. Uh, seeds actually for some rare varieties and some other things that I grew in the series 
dragon fruit always a winner uh, I'll show you though real quickly what I've done over here on the side of the house this is my southern facing exposure is I have expanded greatly so some of these things were started in the what you got growing on goofy series Port oil spray helps with that. Oh, that's good to know. Find, trying to find sugarcane in the panhandle. Yeah, I got my original sugarcane from the panhandle, actually. Uh, it was purple sugarcane grown into small thing. At, there are sugarcane syrup farms up your way that are epic. I mean, like historical. So, boy, that's a cool comment. Um, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll try to remember if you can leave a comment in this video about the sugarcane I'll follow up with a with a video about what I know about where to get sugar canes where to go to our farms how to get it Yeah, that's a cool topic. Thanks All right, so I grew this star fruit tree. I actually grew four gave one away two died But one lived and it's gonna power now as long as it can wait make it through the cold winter like all of us We just make it through the cold winter Ah, oh, spring full of purple possibilities purple. Oh, yeah the purple the red sugar cane, the green sugar cane, the yellow sugar cane. These are the ones I've grown, which are all the chewing cane varieties, so to speak. Okay, so what do I have here? Carrot greens. Lots of carrot greens. Actually, I'm going to... This is why I grow carrot greens for the bunnies. You can... I mean, they're good to, for me to eat as well, as it turns out. Everything the bunnies love, we can also love because they're such little delicate creatures. You have to be very careful what you give them, but... Uh, I'm going to claim that there's nothing, nothing, oops, got the whole carrot that time. Oh, look at that, little baby carrot. I'm going to feed him one of those. You don't want to give him too many carrots, I've read. The actual carrots themselves are high in sugar, so I'm going to give him the greens. But yeah, so I, I've got 10 pots of carrot greens growing, so I have nonstop greens for the bunnies. Right now, this is uh, I produce enough about two cups of greens a day to feed them to keep them going. Guinea pigs, yeah, another great composter. Yeah, guinea pigs are right up there with bunnies in the, the quality of the manure for sure. So, I've got ducat dill, another thing they can eat like crazy, real easy grower. Got those on seeds now. That kind of that's another way to support the channel if you're into such things. I get seeds, I got these seeds. They gave me a $20 gift certificate, and I went there and purchased most of this stuff from there it's all sprouted and grown great this is from ben thacker he gave me some seeds for a pigeon pea so i've got now probably 14 pigeon pea plants growing in my yard two of them in pots they've been growing great here if you don't know about the pigeon pea uh it's amazing i'll try to put a video link here to go back to after i post the video and this is of course the Montindi Montingia, Montingia, Jamaican cherry, strawberry tree, cotton candy tree. It's got so many names, but I just call it simply amazing, the sticky leaved wonder of the world, which produces something I would I really call a cotton candy tree just because it is it tastes so much like cotton candy. Hold on one sec. I don't want to befoul my carrot greens before I get to the destination. Okay. And then I got it from Suzanne over Funky Chicken. I got some cool heirloom varieties of tomato. Uh, it's a, one type of tomato called a uh, Seminole cherry tomato, which is, you know, really kind of a cool Florida variety. Here, here's the, check this out. Isn't that, oh, look at that. Never seen that before. Heirloom seeds, that's another good one to do another video on. Heirloom seeds are just, the way to go and so interesting to me in so many ways but adapted to environments typically much better this is a persian mulberry tree i actually planted that in one of the episodes to the series so yeah lots of things growing edible pad cactus woman bamboo so that's what's going on i've converted my southern part of my yard there's another mulberry tree into that a growing area okay so here's some red kale as well I think I'll just take a couple pieces of that. They like the red kale, but what I've read is don't go overboard with the kale. Yeah. <laughs> and that, I think, you know, again, what's good for the bunnies is probably good advice for us 
in most cases, but uh, yeah, like the kale. I don't know. The kales are used in in farming application. Well, these leafy greens to remove uh, contaminants from soil, so they they will pull up toxins from the soil quite readily. So you know to go like all in with kale, superfoods, whatever. Nobody, nothing does that. You just eat nothing but farm produced vegetables. So it's a very unnatural state. Oh, look at this. You see that? Again, this is why we do it, and this is why I'd like to convince everybody to add this kind of system to their life if you have the ability to do so, even if it's indoors. You get to connect with the world in a much more uh, meaningful way. These little uh, Cuban annelies, these little. Uh, lizards are all over my yard and they actually I've watched their behavior for years they establish kind of dominance I'm or the phone is five inches away from this thing and it'll just sit there because that's its ledge and it'll fight off any lizard that tries to get there they compete for the high points like up on this tree form sea grape throughout the day so anyhow that's what's going on there all right boy this video is going to last two hours if I don't pick up the pace dragon fruit using the old the new, the new technique, but the one that was told to me, which is to plant multiple dragon fruit cuttings because it increases your probability of fruiting. Really cool observation. Three different varieties of bananas. I just started here a musa, a apple, and I believe maybe an Orinoco. I added a lot more crotons to my yard this year just because I saw some cool varieties at Lowe's that I was into. Here's one, Petra. Croton is another that's a classic, that's not an uncommon one. But I also added three more varieties of fig trees. This is a Celeste fig. And uh, if you love figs, like I love figs, having one variety is simply not enough. No green iguanas, Ben. None. <laughs> the iguanas eat the tomatoes. <laughs> that is wild. That is so cool to know. Yeah, we don't have any iguanas here. We have geckos, those very large, you know, the ones that oh, they make that sound at night. We have those big boys. Um, I think they probably eat mostly the Cuban anales, but I don't know. Oh, look at this. This guy's still there. Yeah, well, I'm a bigger lizard than he is, so I can get him off his dominance perch there. But the, these uh, Celeste, I've read are okay, garden earth guy. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer that in just a sec. These Celeste have closed end figs, which is very, uh, very appealing to me. And I also like that they they are seem to be described something like the Tommy Atkins of fig trees, and that they're more like a commercial variety, less susceptible to pests. So that's and you can see now. By the way, everything that you see here now is infused with bunny berries, and I got these this greens in my hand. I don't want to make them all get wilty, so we'll probably go there shortly. I want to give those buns fresh, crunchy greens. But uh, yeah, all of these things have been fed with bunny, bunny manure. So the new vigorous growth you see there, I'm going to attribute to bunny manure. And we'll just go look at the other figs on the way to the bunny cage, which I have built all the way on the other side of that yard. I kind of, you'll see what I did. I, I made an enclosure, an exercise area with their cages too, and bunny collect, turd collection system. Here's another variety, which I actually lost the label of it. So I'm gonna have to go back and see what the, at the place where I bought it to see what kind it is. But it was just 12 bucks, another type of fig tree, different variety I didn't have. Here are my composting bins. I'm up to two, we'll probably go to three. This is a very simple system. I'll put a link to the video I made about how to make it. It's just, you basically un unroll a compo, you unroll an animal cage uh, wire roll that you get at the store and uh, fasten it together and there you go, compost bin. So, and it is just stacking with compost. I also relocated my Musa, giant Musa banana grove to this corner. I can show you that in a sec. I had this whole area here, if you're already a, you know I had this whole corner area oh the, the summer rust oh, that's very interesting on the fig trees yeah the fig trees do get the rust all of mine do and the leaves fall every year but the fruit is good but it would be great if I could find a natural non-pesticide way to to reduce the rust I heard of putting down different metals and sprays and stuff I didn't want to do that but if there was a natural way 
a more natural way. But look at these musa. You know, they grew right up into the power lines, which I should have known better, but I didn't realize they were going to get 30 feet tall. My bad. So I have to make a correction here. I finally had enough when one grew over my neighbor's cable line there. That's that lower line you see right, right in this area. And then it was also leaves were hanging over the 220 line. That was it. So we got rid of all those, called the power company, got it. I got it cut down and dealt with. And I'm going to now transition this area into a Moringa, Mulberry, and Red Roselli forest. And I've just started to do that. Here you can see this is a, that's Roselli. No, yeah, that's Roselli. And there's some okra. And, but that's Robolini, by the way, another video where I show what I do with palm nuts. Jack and I came out here, harvested three types of ripe palm nuts, and I just go lay them down in a part of my fruit forest. And then I come back and look at them every few months or so. And uh, well, all the Robolini seeds I put here, a lot of them did very well. So I'm gonna transplant those into pots, but that's how I like to grow palms. It's enjoyable. Okay, so I built this enclosure so that the bunnies could exercise and also have a nice protected place from the elements, but still get wind. The things that the bunnies really, really don't like is the heat. So you got to be conscious of that. I might get a fan this summer just to keep them cool. One thing you do is you put ice, you, you freeze water bottles and then put those in the cage. There's things like that. But these bunnies survive fine just in, in Florida. They came from bunnies that survived just fine in Florida. As long as you keep them in the shade, keep the breezes blowing, they love it. But they don't mind the cold temperatures one bit. So I'm planting things in this bunny enclosure that bunnies love. Like, there's a red sugar cane and all around it, lemongrass. There's some dwarf, some ever-bearing mulberries. Here's some more ever-bearing mulberries that they already chewed. <laughs> They've been chewing on this green sugarcane cutting I got there too, which is fine. The rules of the bunny cage is let the bunnies do what the bunnies do. And so I keep loose soil. We let them dig holes. We let them exercise. They run. The thing, there's a thing I learned about after I got the bunnies called the Bunny 500, which is where the bunnies will take off and do circles, or banking turns, hard, fast banking turns in circles. And Thumper has done four in a row so far. So here we are. Hey, Penelope. How you doing? Mm, cleaning. Hey, Thumper. Thumper, you want some greens? All right, so I built this cage. I gotta do a video on the cage. Let's see if anybody's interested. I built it to be as clean as possible and as comfortable as possible for the bunnies and to be a system. Oops. Oh. Okay. You have this thing where I can just hook it up under here with the rope and just go in. Hey, Thumper. I've been training them with sounds, so. I <laughs> but when the Thumper was already out exercising this, this morning and doing many, many laps. So he is actually kind of tuckered out. What they'll do mostly is we get him out in the morning. They can't resist the smell of the carrot greens. I mean, there's no way. Look at that. Yeah, if you put a carrot grain in front of your bunny and it doesn't eat it, it's probably dead. Or about to die. So, <laughs> Will you come to the front of the cage. One other thing that we do is, oh yeah, he's up now. He got a taste. Once you get the flavor. Now I put fresh mulberry sticks in here. Hey, thumbs. Oh, he he loves to want to hold the mulberry stick for him so he can get a special angle on the bark. See, he's chewed it everywhere he can easily get to it. To me, a mulberry stick is like a bone for a dog. You see how he plays with them? He'll lift them up and toss them and chew on them. And we keep a fresh supply of mulberry sticks and mulberry greens. This is some mulberry greens I put in last night. He ate, but actually Penelope got the same amount. She ate every single thing. Mm. 
Yeah, you like those mulberry greens. All right, all right, here you go. I know what you want. Will you stand up for the internet? Yes, I'm training them. Yeah, so. <laughs> this one, a little perfect carrot. Miniature carrot. I'm trying to get the dirt off there for you. So, <laughs> I'll show you the pots of greens I've got growing. I've got so many carrots growing. Hey, yeah. Ooh. Sometimes you find yourself feeding a lionhead bunny a micro carrot on the internet live stream. See, see his hair out. These things have the most unbelievably soft fur. Come over to that side. You see, I've got these these plastic mats down because you don't want them to have their little pads on the, this wire all the time but he actually sleeps on the wire for not even though I got three of these pads probably went overboard hey Thumper you don't want your carrot <laughs> all right I'll put it on here for later yep so this guy loves to be pet. He'll immediately go into the submissive position, head down, and just... Yeah, everything a rabbit dreams of. Fresh greens, exercise. I'll put it right here. Try that kill. Try that kill. Go up for the kill. Yeah, so of course, part of the bunny experience is feeding the bunnies, petting the bunnies, and then the business aspect is they are producing for you all the time fertilizer that can go directly onto your your garden. Here, put that there. He wants more. <laughs> Here. All right. So, some new additions to the yard include this new strawberry tree I've got and bunny turds galore you might see around the base and already fruiting it's had a number of fruit on it so loving that this is a prolific producer of fruit uh, I added grapes this type of grape that tends to do well in Florida and I'm adding the roselli of course wherever I can this entire, all these bananas were transplanted from my other grove. Gigantic banana cuttings, but my experience has been easy to transplant them and you have a lot of success uh, doing it that way, even when they're quite gigantic. So you can see I even planted one here by this compost bin. So here is my back growing area. Um, just to give you an overview, got a collection here of giant Hawaiian papaya those are from that and each one of these uh, likely produce something like that very very easy to grow and I started these on the what you got growing on series if you want to see how to get those growing but once they're growing what I do is put a collection of them in I put hundreds of seeds in a pot and then I separate them later that's what I've done here then as they grow um, it'll become clear once they flower which ones are male and female you get rid of the males and then you have great papayas. I also have Moringa, the tree of life, growing, ready for incorporation. I've got four of those trees started in pots, and I've got a few more sprouting. 
the giant mammoth sunflowers, of course, are a staple. This is a work area, so we've got piles of dirt and manure and other things left over. Here are all my carrot greens. Coming right in for those bunnies. We're going to have plenty of greens. Again, the seminal cherry tomato. Okra, I'm really going in heavy on this year, and that's one that does well in Florida in the summer. It worked out in Miami, too, of course. Uh, other crops like clover, again, for the bunnies. And for me, I like eating clover. And there's the moringa. I'm sorry, the pigeon pea. Getting confused, the pigeon pea. Some more microgreens, but I read these aren't so great to feed to them, so I'm not going to, but this is the red beets. And there's a lot of things growing. I actually even put one moringa, one moringa tree, one moringa seed directly into the ground, and it sprouted. So we'll see. Two of them sprouted. Okay, solar-powered snap fans. Yeah, thanks. I'll look into that. I appreciate the comment, definitely. Yeah, so I was wondering, what's the best fan to use back in that area? Got to be you know able to be rained on and and so on. The cage setup I've got is pretty good in that I can leave it very open and airy so wind flows through and stays really cool with these eastern sea breezes. We get here all the time, but then I can also have it set up so I can easily put a tarp over it if it rains. But you, you got to be careful, I think, with the tarp, especially in the summertime, it can get too hot, and that's why you want that open ventilation. But yeah, uh, just pigeon pea plur. I'm going to try to say this. Pigeon pea proliferation in my yard. And I love it. I put them all over the place. And uh, they seem to be responding. Another thing that the bunnies love are herbs. I've got some basil growing back there, which I'm really excited about. Now, in terms of other trees in the center of the yard, staples, the bunny manure is revitalizing everything. This is the rebirth of my yard. This is season three of Eat Your Backyard, is what I'm calling it, because it's a brand new milestone, which was to really put into practice the plants, which Ben Thacker showed me uh, over at, over his food forest, and then the, the system that Suzanne taught me over at Funky Chicken Farms. I put those concepts, which are incredibly meaningful to me, into practice here, and uh, I'm enjoying seeing the effects already, which is, crazy amounts of green growth and and energy in these trees that like i haven't seen before this is a longan tree and dragon's eye fruit it is got flowers on it for the first time in five years is it the bunny bunny berries well i don't can't say conclusively but something changed this is an edward mango or what they call Philippines variety of mango, which is yellow skinned. I've never gotten mangoes off of it. This year it is up above the, the uh, sprinkler system completely and it's got a number of mangoes that are looking like they're gonna set. This is my Suriname cherry, a big producer over the years. Again, another very common thing in South Florida, almost like a weed here in Central Florida, more of a novelty, but I love the Suriname cherry. And it is, it had so many bees on it this year, it sounded like a beehive for a, like a week, just, so loud but the pollinators were swarming around it's so good to see you know when i can when i moved into this house about 20 years ago no pollinators no bugs it had a a few ornate shrubs and an elm tree and uh now it is thriving little system and going to get a heck of a lot better and you don't just judge the health of your system by the size of your fruit but you also judge it by put a shovel in the ground and that's something I learned when I was at Funky Chicken Farms which is that my soil is dead 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 even the, and so I started to do chop and drop composting and I got a red wiggler farm which I'm going to show you last in this video but finish what we're talking about here so the Suriname cherry is just full of fruit I can't wait to show you when this comes in but I think we're just gonna be showering fruit my Barbados cherry I haven't seen flowers on it yet this is the only thing I haven't seen much of a change in other than it's healthy which it already was kind of healthy and then my chocolate pudding tree I did a radical trim back on this but it's come back in full force it's black sapote relative of the persimmon, if you're familiar with the persimmon. This is, to me, one of the, my favorite 
persimmon type trees just because it's such a novelty. Tastes like chocolate pudding a bit, looks like it when the fruit's ripe. Not a lot, just a bit. Very hardy, glossy, ornate leaves, beautiful trunk. I mean, the whole thing is awesome. I just did a massive cut on it, so look, it's already healing back. And that, this will actually heal over if you cut them correctly. Yeah, nitrogen gets blasted from the soil. Wow, San Juan Merge and 250 wood chips. Yeah, yeah. You're, it's constantly the sand. Is, yeah, it's like being, I, I think of it like being on a really slow moving type of liquid, being on a sand type of environment. You know, here on the barrier island, yeah, we're just like on a sandbar. I mean, this isn't made to grow vegetables or fruit. If you, if you look at this, we're, we're doing something really truly artificial by creating a food forest like this. You have to really create a system to do it. It's almost like creating a space colony or something, you know, a closed biome. Yeah, that's right. Never ends. You got to replenish that soil. You got to get the whole system feeding. And I don't have a complete system here. I'm just working towards it. But I've got a couple components missing in the complete closed system, uh, namely uh, rain barrel, rain harvesting capability, uh, and worm colonies, which I'm going to start the worm colonies all around the yard. But then once I establish them, you know, get them set up and I'm going to do a video about establishing these worm colonies, then I'm going to have to feed them. But if you put a shovel into the yard here anywhere three months ago, you would be hard pressed to find worms. How do I know? Well, Jack and I went around with a shovel and we went searching everywhere, even under the, where these rotten papayas are, where there's some food, but it was so dry. I think there's no worms. Yeah. Problem is, you got to have both things for the worms. You have to keep it consistently wet and you have to feed them f things to eat like, you know, rotten papayas or star fruit or uh, bunny turds, certainly bunny turds. And they'll stay around there and thrive. Cardboard, brown cardboard scraps, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm going to set these up all around. And now they don't have that much because also my irrigation approach was kind of uh, lacking, but I got one of these cool uh, water wand things it makes it so easy now I come out here and it's part of my ritual habitual ritual is to go around and water everything and make sure everything stays wet including those two compost bins you know uh, something I learned was that in order to have the compost bin rocking you got to feed it water as well and I'm thinking I don't know if do you create a worm colony in your compost bin oh, all these things to know but look at this big dog that's a Neary fig tree. Now, fig aficionados of earth, I'm with you. Ivory soap. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah, over top of irrigation, I am. Really cool comment. This is a GE Neary or GE Neary. I don't know how it's pronounced. I don't know what GE stands for here. It's probably not General Electric. But this is a type of giant fig they say they claim that it is moderately salt tolerant easy to grow gets to be about 12 feet tall tops and produces figs that are like the size of tennis balls so i had to get one that's that now i have one and it had a little rust on the bottom leaves and i actually picked off the bottom leaves because i was concerned about it and i read on the internet somewhere they said just remove the diseased leaves and then I, after I picked them, I thought, ah, that didn't do anything other than just starve the tree of its lungs and, and ability to thrive. But it seems to be doing okay. Uh, I didn't get rid of all of it, which is the tragic irony of the whole process, is I removed it and I left this one, which it does have a little bit of that, that on it already. You know, if my claim, if you're growing figs in Florida, that rust is going to be part of your deal. And, wow. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm definitely Gardener Earth Guy. If I can grow... And I'll, you know, I'll take that challenge right now um, from you personally, which is if, if, if I am successful in producing a fig from this Neary fig tree, I will blast it out of a cannon over the ocean. Yeah, it'll probably be like an air cannon, maybe a piece of PVC pipe. Jack and I will build something. But hold me accountable on that one. Don't let me forget when I post the Neary fig fruit video 
to uh, launch one of those suckers to an altitude uh, you know unknown or I could just actually tape it to the top of my drone and just take it up to 400 feet and drop it over the ocean feed the fish figs hashtag feed the fish figs all right so that's the Neary stoked on that one so much uh, I also planted a Persian fig tree in here I want to show you my worm farm though and then I'll probably wrap it up yeah that's a Persian fig tree neighbor of mine let me have a cutting I planted it in one of the leaves and here it is look at that well all the worm tea by the way is not hurting at all but look at this this is the worm farm which I learned all about over a funky chicken and it's actually I don't see any wigglers out on the top I just put a little hay in there last night it's got cardboard it's got plenty of bunny berries but I bought some wigglers set up this double container thing I've got to actually there's two of these of these PVC storage bin type things in it but this one is now just resting on top of the other one and I need to actually elevate that that'll be the next thing I do but this will produce worm tea Let's see if I can no, I missed the hole but <laughs> lots of worm tea which you put on all the plants and make it grow better so this is an easy system to put together I'm gonna make a video on that as well so you can check it out but it cost a total of about $25 and not including the worms, which are about 30 bucks, bought a chunk. But now they are thriving. And in fact, I feel like I don't have enough dirt in them, in there for them all to live. And I'm going to start to populate different areas of my yard with worm colonies, just one at a time, because like all of our little pets, worms included, free range worms, uh, they will die if not cared for. And these red wigglers need food and water, like all worms. So I don't want them to burrow down into the depths of the earth and escape. I want them to be up here producing vermiculture, that is worm castings, worm poo. Oh, Garden Earth guy, I sure will. Yeah, you gotta get a worm farm. Nine-year-old son wants a worm farm. Yeah, that, that's mandatory now. Yeah, my 10-year-old son wanted a worm farm too. That's one of the reasons we have one. But the other reason is, you know, I've been putting worm tea on all these plants. Worm and uh, I haven't tried to harvest the worm castings yet. I'm not sure exactly how to do that, but um, I, I mean, I've seen videos on how to do it where you try to get them all to go to one side of the farm or the other side of the farm, but you know, by just putting food on that one side. That's probably what I'll do when I decide to go that route. So, yeah, lots of things growing. Now's the time to get out and start planting. I spent all day yesterday planting things around the yard and uh, now today I get to just come out here and enjoy this beautiful, beautiful, I'll say spring day. So thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please do. If you'd like to support the channel, please use the links in the description to Amazon and anything you get there helps and doesn't cost you anything extra. All right, have a great day, and thanks for watching. Eat your backyard.